Hello, this is Stuart Symington, the United States Ambassador to Nigeria. Bishop Sunday, thank you very much for your invitation to be with you, and thank you even more for this opportunity to talk to you and to all the distinguished guests and other speakers who are with you today. Even though I'm not there with you in person, I'm absolutely with you in spirit. The topic of this meeting is one of the most important that I can imagine for the future, not just of your country, but the world. What is the vision that you have? What is the vision that you share? And what is the vision that you can disseminate everywhere, not just in Nigeria, but outside Nigeria and all around the world? Well, here's the heart of my vision for Africa and my vision for Nigeria. This is the continent that rapidly growing with a young force of thinkers and doers and actors, of men and women, of exceptional promise, this is the continent that will make a compelling difference over not just the remainder of my lifetime, but the life of the world. I'm sure everyone in this room knows that today the population of the world is about 7 billion people. The estimate is that the world will grow by about 2 billion more in another generation. One billion will, will be the increase everywhere else in the world, and one billion will be the increase on the continent of Africa alone. And of that billion, it may be that as many as 250 million, one-fourth of the total, will be born right here in Nigeria. So the question that everybody has to ask as they look towards the future is not just how many will we be, but what will we do? And who will we do it with? So here's my thought. My vision for this continent and for Nigeria is that you hold in the promise of your hands not just your future, but the future of freedom and the future of free enterprise and the future of all those who will look to this continent to realize their own dreams as partners, as investors, as friends, and as everyone in this room knows, so many Americans do every day as family. Let me say a little bit more about the road to this vision. First, there's a great curve of demographic possibilities for Nigeria. There's got to be an equal curve generating hope and prosperity and security and opportunity to keep pace with that curve of population. And the time to affect that curve is right now, 2018. I know that all over Nigeria today, there are an awful lot of people who are looking to 2019 and uh, will soon be offering themselves as candidates for office, a few for state elections right now. I urge each of you to spend the time that every citizen should thinking about elections in next year. But when you think about them, I urge you to ask the candidates, not what will you do for me tomorrow, but what are we doing together today? And what have you done to make this country, and maybe all of us, even more prosperous, more secure, more stable, more filled with hope and opportunity than we would be if you were not there? These are the sort of issue-based, thought-based questions that I hope all of you will ask all of your candidates for office at every level. But I'd ask you to do one more thing. 2018 is too important a, a moment in time as you think about those curves stretching out, these lines that will last for all time. 2018 is too important to let it be simply a year in which you're thinking about the next year. Today, all of us have been affected by killings in different parts of Nigeria killings by not a group, not um, uh, a faith, not a category of people, but killing by bad people who are together doing harmful things and often awful things to their fellow human beings. It's time for that to stop. And the way for it to stop is for every leader to show their absolute full investment 
in pulling together all the instruments of government to make the killing stop. But they cannot do it alone. No police force in the world and no army in the world has the capability to keep a nation truly secure without the help of the people. So the second big challenge is this. What can you do, each of you, to support your government and all that work for it and with it to make sure that security and stability returns and that the killing stops now? This is extraordinarily important. There's another thing that's almost as important as that, and that is to generate opportunity. So I, I want to share with you a notion that I, that I have uh, already mentioned once before when we celebrated our National Day in both Abuja and Lagos this week. Here's the idea. Nigeria right now needs to be filled with Nigerians and other friends and visitors and partners who don't just think, what's my future, but what's our future? Who ask themselves not only how can I get ahead, but how can we get ahead? Not only what can I do for my country, but what can I do for my fellow Nigerians? So here's the notion. We have a program that's run by my colleagues who work in our public affairs section, and it's Africa-wide, but it's nowhere more successful than it is right here in Nigeria. It's called the Young African Leader Initiative Network, the YALI Network. Today there are 120,000 people or so who are members of this network. And what it really is, is online mentoring. So here's the idea. Nigeria needs a Nigeria scale investment in lifting up other Nigerians who might not have had the education and the opportunity that I hope many of you have had in your lives. All of you have had that have brought you successfully to this spot. Now's the time for a Nigerian scale investment in mentoring. And that means tell 10 million mentors or more. Now in most places, the idea that you could get 10 million people to take a moment to help lift up one other person would be a pipe dream. In Nigeria, it's more than possible. Let's go back to that Yali network that I talked about. We've got about 120,000 people there. If each one of them could reach out to eight or nine or 10 people and help them learn some of the things that they've learned online or bring them into the Yali network, that would reach a million people. Every year, something like 450,000 Nigerians who've been privileged to have a college degree do their national youth service. Let's take the last five cohorts of those who've done their national service. That's more than two million people. If each of them only mentored two, that would bring another four million into this 10 million mentors and more in Nigeria. And then Think about all of the people all across this country who are civil servants, who have a fine job, and who seek to do the kind of service that every citizen deserves from their government. Think of those in the police force, in the army. Think of the teachers who are teaching constantly every day, and all those folks that work in commissions and ministries and agencies and departments around this country. How about if all of them mentored a couple of people? I know you're doing it already for your families, which is in part why I and so many other people have had so many opportunities in our life. But now's a good time, all across Nigeria, as we think about children who haven't had an education, as we think about young adults and others who cannot find a job, for us to come together in this year, in 2018, and to answer the question, why am I here and what will I do? Two ways. First, by what I'm doing myself for my family and friends, how I'm making myself a better person. And second, who can I help? Who can I lift up with me? Who can I share with? Because in my view, the vision that really matters, the one that will define not just Africa, but the world in the future, is whether we don't just take what we can do alone, we don't just ask the government what it can do for us, but we take what we can do with others and together
make this nation, make Africa, make the world realize the promise of all time of women and men all across the world who know each other, respect each other, and live together in peace, stability, and prosperity. So there's a message. I, I'm thrilled to share it with you. I wish I had a chance to, to talk to each of you individually. And I hope as you go forward, and I know you're doing it already, that you'll mentor with a difference, just like many of my colleagues are now doing every day at our embassy in Abuja and at our consulate in Lagos. So whatever your skill is, whatever your knowledge, whatever your opportunity, I urge you to share it now. Nigeria needs you this year, and so does the world. All the best, and many thanks for, for your attention and, uh, and for your concern for your country and its future. Thank you. Hello, this is David Young, the Deputy Chief of Mission at the U.S. Embassy in Abuja. It's a real pleasure to be with you today, virtually, as part of your Vision Africa Conference, focused on the theme of nothing but the truth. I want to thank Bishop Sunday Anuaha for his kind invitation and express disappointment that both Ambassador Symington and I weren't able to be with you in person, but we are with you in spirit. We appreciate so much the wonderful work that Vision Africa does and that you have done over many years to make a difference here in Nigeria. I want to recognize the governor of Abia and all the distinguished guests and representatives of the National and State Assembly, the U.S. and Nigerian Vision Africa board members, and delegates from other African countries and Canada. Please, all protocols observed. I want to compliment Vision Africa for the incredible work that you're doing, including medical outreach and women's empowerment, which are such important things addressing health and empowerment of all people, which are fundamental pillars of development. I want to express our appreciation on behalf of the U.S. Embassy and the American people for the work that you're doing to bring together the public and private sectors alongside youth and women to seek honest answers to the questions of how to build a stronger political and socioeconomic system here in Nigeria. You know, for me, in many ways, the subjects that you bring together as people of faith are about pulling together faith and politics. And this is something very close to my heart. Because in addition to being a diplomat for the past 30 years, I'm also an ordained minister in my church, the United Methodist Church in the United States. And since I went to seminary 30 years ago, I've been, in a sense, a bivocational minister with one foot in the government, in diplomacy, and one foot in the church as I've traveled around the world. I've worked over the past 30 years for different efforts to work for peace and justice and human rights and equality, human dignity for all people in my work here in Nigeria the last couple years and before that in Zambia, Sudan, Vietnam, Guatemala, Panama at the United Nations and working on many other issues, including religious freedom in the State Department in Washington. But I've also, as part of my church work, have been inspired by my studies in seminary where I went to Boston University School of Theology, where Martin Luther King got his doctorate a decade or a generation before I went there. I was very fortunate to study with some of the professors who had taught Dr. King as he looked to pull together faith and politics, trying to make a difference out of the values of faith to work for justice and peace and human dignity for all people. He confronted one of the great evils in the United States, the system of Jim Crow segregation that had persisted after the time of slavery in many states in the U.S. And Dr. King rallied people of all faiths together to work for a more just and perfect union, to work for a society that strove for the ideal of being colorblind. We still have a long ways to go in the United States on this struggle, but we actually benefited in many, many ways from leaders like Dr. King, who brought the values of faith into the public sphere as well. 
So one of the quotes that I like very much from Dr. King as we think about our subject today of truth-telling and working for a better Nigeria is one that was often quoted of his. It says, the arc of history is long, but it bends toward justice. For me, this typifies the value that the work we do together matters. The building blocks we put in place and each time we inspire someone and work for a better future, we work for a more just and peaceful world. Now, one of the key things about working towards vision is that it's rooted in the scriptures because vision is key to take us where we want to go. In Proverbs 29, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. So vision is essential. You have to know where you're going in order to get there. As you go down one road, if you don't know the directions, you will be lost. So we have to visualize what we want. The more just and peaceful world that we want, where opportunity exists for all people, especially our children, so they can grow up in a better world. Over the last couple generations, the world has made enormous progress in reducing poverty, in creating better conditions of living in terms of human development for literally hundreds of millions of people. And so that progress that we've seen in many countries, in, in China and India and many parts of the world, have advanced dramatically, driving down poverty around the world but we still have some places where it's very persistent, including those big countries as well. I want to talk with you about some of these challenges of development today. Our vision is a peaceful and prosperous Nigeria where it is just and equitable for all the country's citizens. We in the United States, through our embassy in Abuja, our consulate in Lagos, and the dozen agencies of the U.S. government that we have working here, want to partner with Nigerians of all backgrounds and all parts of the country towards this better future. Now, one of the things you talk about in your conference today is the idea that you have to focus on nothing but the truth. Because working for vision requires truth-telling. And so, as we hear from Proverbs, he who speaks truth declares righteousness as it says in Proverbs 12. Or from Proverbs 23, purchase the truth and do not sell it. So it's essential that we be in a mode of truth telling in order to work for the better future, the vision that we all desire. So in terms of truth telling, I'd like to focus on three things today. First, when we think of Nigeria today, this country has enormous potential. Secondly, it has enormous challenges. And thirdly, there are enormous opportunities for all of us to do good, to serve our fellow men and women, the boys and girls, the leaders of tomorrow, to make of this country a better country and make of it a place where kids can grow up with dignity and opportunity. First off, let's focus on Nigeria's enormous potential. This country has enormously dynamic and creative citizens. There is an entrepreneurial spirit that I've encountered as I've traveled around Nigeria where there are cities pulsating with energy. You know, when you come into Lagos and travel around, you feel the energy as you come into this, this great city, the largest in Sub-Saharan Africa. Nigeria has enormous resources of information technology, of business, of creative arts, of writers, of film, all kinds of creative uh, focuses and opportunities that exist in many ways. Also, there's deep spirituality in Nigeria, as we all know. There's a deep belief of citizens across the country, belief in God, and two of the great monotheistic faiths, Christianity and Islam, most of the citizens, the 180 or 90 million people of this country, belong to one of those two religions. Uh, and there is a tremendous resource of these spiritual resources and gifts that come as part of the opportunities and the potential of Nigeria. And of course, most of all, as we've discussed, 
The great potential of this country is its people. The diversity of Nigerians in unity across their country is a tremendous opportunity. And I think we need to focus on the fact that coming together across diversity creates a stronger Nigeria. And we'll talk about that today. We need to have the country pull together across its religious and ethnic divides to work for a better society and a better future for people of all backgrounds in all parts of this land. And when we think about the people, I particularly am excited about the young people of Nigeria, the creative, excited, enthusiastic, creative spirits that I've met as I've traveled around. And as the ambassador cited, people we meet such as through the Young African Leaders Initiative. And Nigerians in the diaspora, have, they have had extraordinary success as well, reveal this creativity and the opportunity that's available. As Nigerians have come to my country, become citizens there in the United States or visited for work, or in the United Kingdom or across Europe or across the African continent, around the world, Nigerians have distinguished themselves in so many different areas. So that is a tremendous resource for the future. Secondly, we need to talk about the enormous challenges Nigeria faces, because the, the importance of truth-telling is to say, how can we leverage this great potential, Nigeria's people, against the challenges the country faces as well? The flip side of opportunity is challenge. And as the ambassador mentioned, the extraordinary population growth that Africa's largest country is experiencing creates a tremendous developmental challenge as well. As I have spent two years in your country here, one of the things that frankly hits my heart hard as a person of faith, as a minister, and as a diplomat is that one of the great untold stories is the reality that about 60% of Nigeria's population lives in poverty. And sadly, some statistics have just come out in the last couple weeks that show the country with the largest number of citizens living in extreme poverty is Nigeria. This even more so than India, which is unbelievable in many ways when you think that India has more than five times as many people. So I think one of the challenges is to speak to this great need of so many people across rural areas and urban areas of this country who wrestle with deep poverty. Nigeria also has more kids, more children out of school than any country in the world. So when we think about development challenges, fighting poverty, fighting lack of education, fighting health issues, fighting health challenges for kids, this is a huge challenge for the country. And to be in a spirit of truth-telling, we need to face this head-on. Nigeria is a country where there is deep poverty in the midst of affluence. So the challenge for us as faith leaders, as political leaders, as citizens and people of faith, is how do we leverage our resources and our strengths to face challenges like this in the country today? According to Bishop Sunday, Citizens across the country and at your conference are raising questions and concerns about many issues, the political transition, economic realities, security issues, and youth unemployment. You know, Nigeria, as Bishop Sunday has said, has always seen the United States as a great ally in addressing these concerns, and we want to be an ally going forward. An average Nigerian is looking forward to solutions and contributions that we can move forward together as Nigeria works with its partners around the world. And Vision Africa is a great example of how people of faith and people of concern can work together to create a better future for citizens of this country. Bishop Sandi mentioned that one of the themes you're focused on is what are the key elements that hinder development in this country and across the continent? Well, obviously, the importance of living in peace is uh, essential for communities to be primed for development. If it's the Northeast and the challenges that Borno State is going through with the horrific uh, terrorist groups of Boko Haram and Islamic State West Africa, it's very difficult or almost impossible for a society to develop 
when those kind of horrific insurgencies and terrorist groups are operating. People have been displaced from their homes in the hundreds of thousands, and today there are up to five million displaced people in the Lake Chad Basin region up in northeast Nigeria. Similarly, the challenges of striving for peace uh, in rural areas where pastoral farmer violence has taken place and there's fights over scarce resources in communities. All of us need to speak out against these injustices and against the challenges to peace that happen in different parts of this country. And I think it's so critically important that we call people together and call the nation together and not try to divide and break down people along religious or ethnic lines. We need to call injustices for what they are and call and work for solutions that pull all Nigerians together rather than dividing Nigerians. When we look at challenges for development as well, we also focus on human capital. We focus, talked earlier about the extensive poverty in the country, and one of the things that's so important is to address the educational and health inputs that are needed to move forward. We have to create jobs for young people. More than one million young Nigerians are coming into the workforce every quarter in northern Nigeria alone. And it's essential to be able to create opportunities so that young people can move productively into the workforce and not be pulled aside by extremist ideologies. There are other development inputs such as power and roads, having constructive macroeconomic policies that encourage domestic and international savings and investment. All these things are important to get a vibrant power and private sector engaged to create jobs and create opportunity for people of this country. So there are many different challenges for development and I won't try to run through all of them here today with you. But again, we have to focus on peace. We have to focus on the investments for human development, especially education and health. And we have to create conditions for creating jobs so that people have hope for the future. I think when we look at both these resources and these challenges, we now thirdly look at the opportunities for us to do good against these challenges the country faces. Because ultimately, I am an optimist, and I find that the work that we're doing together, Nigerians and Americans and other partners from other lands around the world, we are making a difference in important areas against each of these challenges. It's not to minimize them, but we have to find hope to move forward. We have to work for peace. And this calls on religious leaders, traditional leaders, political leaders, and citizens to speak out for peace, to say that we as Christians and Muslims will work together for a better future for our country, that we as people of different ethnic groups will respect each other and work together for a better future for our country. So we all need to speak out for peace. But without justice, there can ultimately be no enduring peace. So we need to work for justice for all people as well. And in the Bible, social justice, the concept of justice from the Hebrew, talks about the basic components of human dignity, of people being affirmed and recognized as all being God's children. We are all equal in God's sight. So it requires us to focus on those basic human development indices, the things that people need to be able to have basic health and education and shelter and uh, opportunities to live in peace. One of the things that we do here on behalf of our mission and the American people is work actively in the space for public health. We are involved in helping fight HIV AIDS across the country in all regions of this land and particularly active in different parts of the South in the areas where you're gathering for your conference. We partner with Nigerian uh, National AIDS Council and the Ministry of Health to work to have more than 900,000 uh, people receiving antiretroviral drugs that keep them alive who are HIV positive. This affects several million people in terms of family members and others and literally 
hundreds of thousands of children who would have been orphaned have their parents with them because of these life-saving drugs. We're committed to working together on other health challenges, such as fighting tuberculosis and malaria, polio in the Northeast. We work together to fight these diseases to create opportunities for, for children, for adults, as they move forward into the future. We work together in education, in terms of primary education, trying to improve curricula and trying to bring opportunity to, to schools around the country. This, as I mentioned, is a critical component, these health and education inputs that we need to focus on as people of faith and citizens. We also work together to build the potential for peace in terms of speaking out on, be on behalf of tolerance and respect for people of all backgrounds and faiths. So these are just a few ideas of some of the issues that hopefully you will discuss during your conference. The work towards peace, peaceful coexistence, and human development so that all people can live in dignity in this great land. You as a people, Nigerians working with your partners and friends from the United States and around the world and as faith communities can do and are doing great things. We are committed to partnering with you to make a difference for human dignity for all people. I'd like to close with one of my favorite quotes from Dr. Martin Luther King. I have it on my wall in my office. It says, most people are thermometers that register the temperature of majority opinion, not thermostats that regulate and transform the temperature of society. My challenge to you is be a thermostat, be a change agent, help to set the temperature for your country and your community, for your church or your mosque, help to work in your families, communities, and your nation to make Nigeria a stronger, more peaceful, more prosperous land where all its children, including those children out of school who don't have the basics of health, where they can grow up for a better future. For me, that's the call of our faith. That's the call for us as citizens. And it's the place where faith and politics meet. Be a thermostat. Thank you.